Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, we did a video last week about how we kind of felt that this whole pistol brace amnesty registration might be the biggest trap ever set. And I didn't want to get too far into the woods as far as the specifics on it without making a 20, 25 minute video, which none of you would have wanted to watch. So that video, we really spent a lot of time just trying to connect the dots as to how we think this is going to be a huge trap. Today, I want to get a little further into the woods now with you. I want to go through with you on how I think this trap is going to be set and what it's going to mean for you, the lawful and responsible gun owner. So today, we're going to have a really important discussion about how the ATF will set their amnesty registration trap. Okay, so the issue we're talking about today kind of piggybacks off this video here, which was about, hey, is this whole pistol brace amnesty registration period about to be the biggest trap ever set? And I do believe that that may be the case. Now, for some historical perspective, the pistol brace rule was supposed to be published in August. It got pulled back. A lot of people think it may have had to do with the EPA versus West Virginia case. We are expecting that rule to be republished in December, and that will give 120 days or April until the rule becomes effective, thus giving us about 120 days to scramble around and figure out what this all really means to us, the lawful and responsible gun owner. The folks over at Ammo Land, John Crump in particular, did find out about a budget request made by the ATF, which they wanted to amend their Form 1 because they had a new pistol brace amnesty registration period that apparently was coming up. Now, in the video, we talked about why I think it is going to be a big trap, and I connected some of the dots, and the dots really connected between ATF's form 4999, which is that four-point score scale for is it an AR pistol or short barrel rifle, what's contained on Form 1 now and what could be added to a Form 1 quite easily, and the actual language of ATF's budget request. Now, just to get you guys up to speed, when you take a look at ATF's budget request, the language that they used specifically stated, due to the upcoming amnesty registration of pistol brace weapons, photos of the weapon being registered will be required to prove the weapon does utilize a pistol brace in its configuration and would qualify for an amnesty registration. And so my theory was, is that, listen, by amending the Form 1 so that you have to include more information about the firearm and then including the photos, when ATF received your new Form 1 for your amnesty registration, what's going to actually happen is they're going to run it through their Form 4999, a scoring criteria which we are familiar with already from these videos right here, and they're going to send you a nasty little letter and say, hey, this doesn't qualify for amnesty registration because this is an SBR rather than an AR pistol. What I want to talk to you guys about today is how is that trap going to be set, okay? And it starts with this. When we take a look at what ATF is requiring, they are requiring photos of the firearm. Now, I believe that they're going to require more than just a general photo. When you take a look at Form 4999 and the scoring criteria by which ATF is going to use to determine whether you have an AR pistol or a federally regulated short barrel rifle, the information that they need to do the scoring is going to come from one of two locations. The photos you provide them or the information you have to give them on the Form 1. Let's just go through the scoring criteria to begin with. Accessory design. This actually refers to the type of stock or brace which is on the rear of the firearm. And yes, with a photo, the ATF is going to be able to make a point determination in this category. Let's take a look at another one of the ca categories. Rear surface area. What does the rear of the brace or stock look like? Now, do not be surprised if the ATF, when they ask for photos, ask for very specific photos of very specific components of the firearm, including the rear surface area. Adjustability, that's another criteria. Does the brace have adjustability? If so, you have an opportunity to score more points and thus get yourself closer to SBR. This is a question which could easily be added to Form 1 right somewhere in this section right here. And this is what I want you guys to be aware of. Anything that's not going to be able to be established by a photograph all ATF has to do is add a couple of more questions, data points, right down here in this section of Form 1, 
and they're going to be able to accumulate all the information they need to score your firearm. They're going to talk about stabilizing support. They may ask for specific photos of the stabilizing support, but that is an area where they clearly are going to be judging and possibly assigning points. The length of pull. The length of pull is a big deal as it relates to whether you have an AR pistol or you have a short barrel rifle. Take a look at form 4999. We'll put the link for it down below. But you can see that a half inch here, a half inch there makes a huge difference. Now, for those of you not familiar with the length of pull, what is that? That is, is when we take the bracer stock and extend it to its outermost position, what is the, the distance from the trigger to the rear surface area of that stock or brace? Essentially, what is the distance from the trigger to the shoulder if the firearm were to be shouldered? Do not be surprised if you are required to measure that specifically and place that data or information generally right here in the newly amended form one attachment method now this talks about how the brace or what the brace is attached to and this can refer to buffer tubes or other types of modifications you can make a photograph and a question could certainly provide the atf with all the information that they need in order to score that criteria and then the final two criteria Brace modifications, which can easily be detected probably through a photograph, as well as peripheral accessories. So we're looking for things like foregrips and the types of optics that are used and stuff like that. Do not be surprised if you are required to specifically photograph certain components and provide additional information, again, right here in this general vicinity of the newly amended Form 1. So that, my friends, is how I believe ATF is going to set this trap. They have already stated that they're in the process of amending Form 1. That's what they need additional money for. They have already stated that they are going to require photographs of the firearm, and they have already stated that once they have the photographs of the firearm, they need to determine whether or not a stabilizing brace is actually being used and if it qualifies for amnesty registration. My prediction is, is that the ATF is going to find that a large, large majority of these weapons do not qualify for amnesty registration but hey don't worry if you're willing to register with the atf and pay your 200 dollars tax stamp you can keep that firearm now listen a lot of this is speculation on my part as i'm trying to connect the dots and look into my crystal ball to see what may happen here i will keep you posted on more developments as we learn more obviously as the rule becomes closer and closer to publication we're going to have more and more ideas on what this really means to all of us in the lawful and responsible gun owning community. In the meantime, if you have any questions about this or anything else related to your Second Amendment rights, remember you can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or of course you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, let's remember, part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.